What's up everybody, welcome back to the lake. Now it's no secret that we love to do some grilling down here at the lake. We're always grilling up something. Smash burgers, breakfast, ribs, zucchini, carrots, corn, potatoes, peppers, you name it, we'll put it on there. Probably fit some couscous on there if we tried hard enough. This week, I wanted to take you behind the scenes with my buddy John. He's gonna show us how to smoke a rack of ribs. And as always, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. On this channel, we talk about all kinds of lake house living and weekending adventures. So if this is something you're into, won't you consider subscribing? Also, by clicking the bell icon, you can be sure to never miss a new episode. So sit back and let's see what John has cooking. This is a video for anybody who wants to learn how to barbecue and don't put a lot of thought into it and just do. So I'm gonna show you what I've learned so far. I'm gonna be smoking some ribs. I got these from Costco. These are St. Louis cut. I gotta still prep them, season them. The main ingredients are salt, pepper, brown sugar, and then your rub. So whatever rub you wanna get. I made my own. It's a lot of paprika, a lot of brown sugar, other spices like chili powder, salt, pepper in there. It's very little of the other ones because I'm gonna be using that as the main. Next thing I'm gonna do now to first start this thing is I'm gonna start that fire. What I'm using is charcoal and natural wood. And I'm using this, it's a different style of ribs. It's gonna be a hanging rib smoke. And I'm using this Oklahoma Joe smokehouse flavor. A lot of people use fire starters like tumbleweeds or just a match light, or even the charcoal could be a, a match light one. I don't, I don't like using those other ones. I like to use most natural uh, ingredients possible and this is just paper and olive oil. I pour olive oil a little bit on the paper so it lasts longer and it's just a small dab and this is what I'm going to use to start the fire. I am experimenting still with fire maintenance and trying to get the best cook out possible and with this one I have actually layered some charcoal on top Okay, so let's clean these ribs now. I wanna clean most of the moisture off this thing because I want it the most moisture from its natural ability, like of what's inside. So what I'm doing is drying this off. The drier, the better. And I'm trying to remove this skin now because that membrane makes it really tough and the smoke doesn't get in very well. And now that I clean the ribs, I want to wash my hands because I want to start off with one dirty hand, one clean hand now that the ribs are clean and the membrane's taken off. So now I got the dirty ham, which I'm going to be using a lot of the towel because I don't want a lot of this guts all over me. So first thing I'm doing is I'm grabbing the salt, kosher salt. And this is uh, pretty much by experiment. You don't want a lot of kosher salt on these because then it'll get really salty, especially with I got kosher salt inside my rub anyways. I'm seasoning both sides with just the salt for right now. Next, a little bit of black pepper. And I use the coarse black pepper. It gives it more flavor and stands out a little more. And this is what's really good for smoking anything barbecue. Next, I use the brown sugar. And I'm using clean hand with the brown sugar. And then I'm going to rub with the dirty hand. Now, as you can see, the kosher is drawing out moisture. So now I want to grab my rub. And now I got two rubs here. They're both mine, but they got different flavors. One has smoky uh, smoked paprika and the other one doesn't. I'm gonna use the smoked paprika today. It kind of gives it a more of a, a smokehouse flavor. So that's what I'm using today. I'm gonna hit this kind of hard. You want the, all the edges. You want it 
pretty good on there because this is this is going to be bringing out some it's going to suck in some flavor later you want both sides hit okay so now we're almost up to 200 degrees we're at 180 i'm gonna throw some chunks of wood and this today we got pecan i think it gives a really good flavor for these ribs so i'm just using one chunk to get that smoky flavor they say that the smoke that you get from the first half an hour is what soaks into that meat the rust is just cooked so now i'm going to go for 200 on that the smoker once it hits 200, I'm hanging these ribs in there. I got three hooks, I'm gonna be putting these through the, the rib. I'm setting these to where they're hanging over. Okay, so now I got the extra wood here. I need to add more wood instead of charcoal because charcoal gives this nasty flavor. Wood will actually heat up, give good smoke, good flavor, and it'll heat up the whole grill. Okay, from here, now that we got our ribs on, it's just basically maintaining a 200, a 220, 250, around that area. You don't want it to get too much hotter. It's gonna burn the meat then. So you wanna play with these dampers and adjust as, as needed. The more you close this damper, the more you're gonna have to bring down that temperature, but you gotta do it in slow motions and wait for that temperature to drop. Otherwise, you're dropping it too quick and you're gonna have too many spikes, one up and one down too quick. You don't want the fire to go out either, so you don't want to close the damper off too quickly. So now, we just sit back and wait, and that's what's so great about these Oklahoma Joes, is you can actually play bags, toss some Frisbees, do whatever you want. These things maintain themselves because we loaded it up to where it will probably last six to seven hours on this charcoal. Okay, so I pulled these off after four and a half hours and they're close to being done. You're looking for a temperature internal in between the bones, about 200 degrees, but they're still tender. So we're good right now and we're gonna, we're gonna dig into this. We're gonna go ahead and cut into one and you can see and I'll, I'll give you a taste test. Here we go. <laughs> That's a good barbecue. The more you cook, the better it's gonna be because you get experience. I've had a lot of bad cooks in my life and my friends enjoyed those bad cooks with me. So it's part of life, same thing. We mess up, we get better. I'm gonna be experimenting probably till the day I die. So as long as I can cook, I'm gonna be experimenting always. <laughs>